Well, praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. It is a fantastic day to be here. And I have so many great, wonderful things that I want to share with you today about God. And so let's get right to it. Father, I thank you today in the name of Jesus for these words. May they resonate with all who have ears to hear and spirits to receive. I thank you that all distractions are rebuked in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today we're going to dive into the awesomeness of God, but how He is omniscient. Now, what's awesome about God, or not so awesome, is that, is that nothing skips by Him. So that is pretty awesome. If you've not yet gotten this and you have not yet gotten with God, you need to get with Him while you still can. Time is running short. People are freaking out. Lots of things are happening. There's a lot of cybersecurity attacks. People don't know what they're going to do. They don't know which way they're going. They don't know what God they need to go to. There's only one. And today I'm going to share with you these things. So I want you to first turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 4. And as we go throughout what God has for us, I believe that you will begin to see some things that maybe you've never seen before. That maybe you just thought, well, God won't know. Well, We'll find out that truth. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. And look at this. This is just the awesomeness of God that I, I want to say like in my little pea brain, I've yet to grasp. But check this out. Hebrews 4, 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do god knows all things perfectly which makes sense because god is a perfect god right there is nothing there is nothing that god doesn't know i mean look we know that he knows every hair on your head and so even even from when you were born till now, every single one of them. Now, maybe for some of you that may not be a lot. However, God knows all things perfect, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him. Now, this would make sense, right? Because God is a spirit being. So often we want to pull God down to be Jesus with the homies and then talk in whatever vernacular is fit for wherever we are, trying to put Jesus into a mental state instead of us gaining in the mind of Christ. So the more that we gain and grow in Christ, the more that we become less mental. Mental disorders are because of a void of spirit, the spiritual nature. So the more spiritual we become, the less mental we become, the, less, the, the, the more that we grow. So when you start to see these things, you start to be able to see God in, in an entire, entirely different way, which the enemy does not want you to be able to do because then you would see that God is a good God. He's not, he's not what the wicked believe and want to propagate that he is. So we're kind of dispelling some things here today by speaking truth and speaking truth that is power. I don't need to speak truth to power because the only power is God. And God is the power, so I'm speaking of His power in the power in the name of Jesus Christ. So people go, oh, I'm speaking truth. No, you're not. Speak. No, you're speaking truth <laughs> that is the power when you're speaking this word. So praise God for it. Now, let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 23. And, and I'll share with you a little testimony as we, as we go along in this that... that uh, really was so very eye-opening for me and the things of of the Lord on this on this journey and it is in 23 starting in verse 23 now look at this the question is am I a God at hand saith the Lord and not a God afar off, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, 
saith the Lord. Do not I fill the heaven and the earth, saith the Lord? Mm, 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 mm. Okay, let's look at this. Can any hide himself in secret places? Now, I can tell you this, that uh, you can't hide from God. And I've tried. I know. There needs to be like an anonymous group for this, the hiders from God. But I did more than once. But probably the most uh, scariest time was when I was dealing or not yet dealt with my unforgiveness. And I remember telling my Bible teacher, well, I'm, it's a little bit scary. And his response was, well, yeah, I'd be scared if I were you. <laughs> not a very good position to be in. However, I was so scared that I literally was shaking under my covers. Now, some of you might laugh and say, oh, that's because you're living a torment and blah, blah, blah. Well, no, this, this was real for me. And I've been in scary places. I've been in the mountains in Colorado with the bear clawing at my tent. I've had to drive down the mountains in a blizzard trapped between two, two semis and there's no guardrail. If you slide off, you slide off. And I'm in a Mini Cooper. I've been scared in those situations. This was far exceeding of any of those. And here's why. One, it's God. And I had never been in this place before to be in a position to have to deal with what it was that I had not dealt with. And so when you come to the place of no, you can't hide from God, then, then your next best thing is just to deal with it. Because hiding it doesn't work because now you just got more stuff under the rug. So you got a, some of you have a big pile that, you know, it's the rug. You just walk over the molehill all of what was a molehill that's now a mountain. And God knows and sees all. So even when it said, well, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? God knew, God saw. And praise God for the Holy Spirit and praise God for the way of, of truth and counsel for me to deal with what it was. See, a lot of times we, we try to hide thinking, well, you know, nobody will know if I do fill in the blank. Well, right, but here's the problem with this, is that you may, you may boast that you're not a murderer, but no, you're, you're just judging those people over there. So that judgment is, is a secret sin that we don't really like to talk about, you know, because who, who, you know, who wants to get into that? So in this realm, you can't hide from God. Many of you know that God has called you into the ministry and you're hiding. And let me just tell you, you can't hide from God. God knows, God's watching, God sees, period. End of story, not a question mark. So he knows it. You can't hide, which is not a bad thing if you're on the side of God and you can't hide and you need to get an excavation. Lord, I need, I need you to, I need out, help me, Lord, help me. And, and he knows where you are, which is kind of nice. You know, who needs, who needs Alexa to tell you where you are? You can just ask the Holy Spirit, right? And she'll probably be more honest and not try to kill you. So, or he will, God will, you know, so Exodus 11, Exodus 11, let me give you this. God in all of who he is knows the future. Now, I love this because I cannot fathom, nor am I a mathematician, to fathom even what the equation would be for this. But let me read the scripture. It's, a, it's Exodus chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet I will bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence together. Okay. God knows the future. So why are you going to see the psychic? Why are you, why are you entering into the divination? Why are you shaking your little black balls? Why are you... Why are you doing all of these things, entering into the soothsayers and paying for this and for that and the cards? It's not in the cards. Well, yeah, who deals in cards? Why are you watching all of this stuff that is, that is sorcery, divination, and not a God? 
God knows, not only does God know the future, he knows your future. So when I look at all of this, this is what's incredible to me. God knows the future. Like he knows the future so far beyond any of us and our future like he he knows the future of your unborn children like like he's just that cool of a god like he just knows he's he's just god right i mean think think about that for a moment that god knows the future he knows your decisions before you ever thought to think of them he knows the future. He knows what wars, what not wars, what fake wars, what wars and rumors of wars. He knows whether or not you're going to be diligent seeking him. He knows the timelines, the events, every single thing. He knows every storm, real storm, fake storm, do storm, no storm, whatever storm. He knows the future of all things and all things in all things. Now, the wicked... In, in their idea of how brilliant they are, are creating their own God to compete with God, not realizing that even in all the infinite amount of information that they could gather, what they fail to realize is this. God is a spirit God of wisdom, and we know that wisdom is a feminine spirit. Okay, we know that out of Proverbs. Everything that they're doing to compete with God is mental. <laughs> so they continue to prove their mental state. Because God is spirit, and in seeking all of these other things to be like God, they're still mental, because God is spirit. So God knows and sees all. Don't think that God's just not having a chuckle up there. I mean, who? if you were God, wouldn't you just laugh at some of the things that you do? <laughs> I look at some of the things that I do and wonder, wow. And then I thank God that there's still hope for me. Now, I want you to go with me to the book of Job, chapter 12. Job, chapter 12. 32, 38. Pages are running together. Job 12, verse 13. Okay? Look at this. Now, I led, I, I, I led you all to this. So look at this. Um, with him is wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. Okay. God's infinite wisdom and ways are really beyond our comprehension. We may, we may look at, at the scientific uh, or the periodic table and know that this is what's in a cloud. I, I still don't understand how they don't just fall out of the sky. Now, for those of you that are scientists in quantum physics, and all, you, may, you may have a much greater, broader understanding. But the fact that they were put there and they're just there and they don't fall, I think is kind of amazing. Like there's so many things that I cannot comprehend and there are some things that I don't have the desire to comprehend because it's too much brain activity and energy that, you know what, I'll stay, I'll stay in my little bubble over here, in my pink bubble and it's okay and, and move along. But God's wisdom is so far, even if we were to take all of us in wisdom, not the intellects, but in wisdom, all excuse me, the wisdom that all of us have co collectively together is still not the wisdom that God has. So think about that. If you go back, you might say Smith Wigglesworth. You might even go back even prior to that. Maybe we go back to Thomas Kempis. We go all the way back, right? Watch Menin. You see, okay, well, these are great men of God and they walked in wisdom. But even then, their wisdom plus our wisdom plus all the wisest wisdom of all the men, even Solomon, right, the wisest man to ever live, in all of that, it still does not compare to God. God's wisdom and knowledge are so far beyond us. That's how great, big, magnificent God is. But they don't want you to know that. 
because then you know you might be onto something now in the realm of of this let me take you to psalm 139 psalm 139 i love this too where it tells us that you were you were fearfully and wonderfully made i just think that's just so beautiful because if we really started taking that scripture to heart we would not see the filthy agenda that is stealing the womb of of women and we would not see so many hurt men that think that if they become women that they'll have it easier you know studies still show that over 85 percent of the people that go through these identity transitions that what ends up happening is that they're in therapy more after because it didn't fix their identity crisis that they were actually walking in and so it's it's a situation that when when you start to see you fearfully and wonderfully made god did not make a mistake when he created you and that is not in my notes for today but apparently somebody here listening needs to know that you are not you are not an accident you are not a mistake now in psalm 139 1 look at this i love this i love this O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Now, kind of creepy. <laughs> if you really think about every single thing, imagine if somebody really just studied you to, to the nth degree. It's kind of creepy, okay? It's just creepy. Um, because they just might just be fascinated or they might be a freak, you know, they, they could be just the, the stalker that's on his way out, you know. But, but God's knowledge of us is just, is, is something that even the psalmist finds uncomprehensible in, in such a way that God is the one that, that created you. He he knows every single thing. He knows what you've yet to discover. Like, help me discover me, O oh Lord. Show me and teach me about me. Help me to know myself and walk with me in agreement with me so I can walk in agreement with you so that we can walk in agreement because how can two walk together if they're not in agreement? And if I'm not, not even in agreement with myself because I don't like myself and I've got this issue, then how can I walk with you? Now you start to see that God knows every single thing about you and, and to a way that is based upon love because that is the God that we serve. God is a loving God. He is the creator of all. Jealousy and, and all the sin came in through jealousy of the enemy. God's, God's intent was never of any harm ever anywhere. And God knows everything about you. He knows what you have yet to learn. He knows what you have yet to find out, explore, identify, discover. So every day with the Lord becomes a discovery. Because he already knows what you're going to like and what you don't like. Why you like this. Why you don't like that. Ask him. Like there are so many things yet to be, to be discovered that we, we've not even uncovered. And that, that, when you start to look at that in your relationship with the Lord, you start to see so much of the scripture in a, in a very different way in how awesome God is and what he really has for us. Now, I want to take you also, we're going to be in, let's see, where are we going to be? Still in, um, in the book of Psalms, chapter 33. Psalms 33. So turn a little bit, a little bit to the left. Psalms 33. Let's see here. 33 and it is in, let's see here. 33 starting at 15. Uh, do I want to be in 15? No, I want to, I want to start 33, uh, 13. That's where I want to start, 13. The Lord looketh from the heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. 
From this place of his inhabitation, he looked upon the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioned their hearts alike. He considered all of their works. Not only does it is God's knowledge of us so far beyond what, what I can comprehend. And I got to say that the more that I study the word and the more that I grow in my relationship with the Lord, the more ignorant I really am. And, and I'm okay with that because there's so much in the word of God that I just will never know that there's not enough, there's not enough time on this earth to really know everything. Like, like I don't quite grasp mustard seeds. I mean, they're so small. And, and there's just, think of all the things that, that are amazing. Now we can go back into Proverbs, right? Well, the things that, that are of God, you know, the, the way a young man with a woman, the way a bird's flight, so on and so forth. But here in this, God misses nothing about you. And this is something that, that, that our society today is really missing everything about everyone. And, and what's happening as a result is that everything is always looking at what you are not, not who you are. You know, you're not skinny enough. You're, you're not this enough. You're not that enough. This isn't right enough. It's not right enough. This isn't good enough. And, and you start to see the beat down. Everyone is in the church. It's outside the church. It's just society. And people are striving and going to and fro and fro and to, but I might ask a question, where are you going? God is the one that knows and does not miss anything about you. He knows where you've been. More so than the people that judge you for where you've been. This is why I say, I don't, I don't care what your past is your past. It brought you to this point. Praise God. Now we can go forward. I don't care who you voted for. God will clean all that up. What, what do I care? I'm not going to hold it against you because that's a waste of energy, number one. And two, who needs the bondage? I mean, people reveal always where they are, and that's okay because we're just told to love them. And so God misses nothing about us. So when you start to look in the mirror, what, what are you thinking that God is seeing about you most often? Well, you know, I got a hair miss and I got, a, I got this thing and I got this thing and I got this and I got this and da 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 head, shoulders, knees and toes, not right. You know, all, the, all of those things. But God, God didn't miss those tears that you cried yesterday. God's not missing seeing what your desires are right at this very moment. God is not missing knowing your future. And he's waiting, his Holy Spirit is waiting for, for a conversation with you. And when you start to see that, you start to see how really not alone, that, that you're not alone. That he's there and the greatest day of my life was when I got the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Because I, you know, I had no clue. And, and it was so transforming because I had been missing it. Which is not, I'm not lost on the irony of that. And I'm also not lost on my ignorance of it either. But here is that God misses nothing about us. Come with me to Jeremiah 1, 5. Look at this. 1, 5 of Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. But look at this. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God didn't miss anything about you before you were even thought to be. That's how amazing God is. He knew you before your parents even met. He knew you before your mother even had a thought to think to even know you. He knew your whole lineage before any of them were even born. Like that's that's pretty awesome God. Like really like I can't even grasp the depths of that. When we say that he knew you, he knew you in the belly before you were formed, but God created everything before the foundation of the earth. So now we start to look and see, oh, even before anything was even there, he knew you. He did not miss anything from before you were born to the time of now. And this is why there's such a move to break that relationship and to remove the word of God pretty much from any and all places so that you would never get to know the truth because the truth he will set you free, and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. There's no money made in freedom. 
There's only money made in bondage and sickness and illness. But the word is freedom. The word, the word has the answers for unforgiveness issues, health issues. The word is, is, is an answer for financial problems and relationship problems and void of character problems. It is, it is, it is a business book. It is a book for how to prosper and how to walk and how to war and how, and how to understand the different levels of warfare. Bible has everything in it. It's just that, you know, when you start to learn and you start to grow in wisdom, then you start to see the intellect is really void and you start to see the characters of corruption that are, that are uh, magnifying themselves all around the earth. And of course, you know, the more that you see, the more that you see. Now, go back with me. Um, let's go to, let's go to um, Proverbs. We'll go back to Proverbs 15 should be here. Proverbs 15. Yeah, look at this. Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God's eyes, now we also know that God's eyes are on the righteous, right? So um, now, the righteous are believers, but not every believer is righteous. So you separate the two and say that God's eyes are on the righteous. But guys, God's eyes are everywhere. Now, that's pretty awesome. It can also be a little bit not so awesome, because we've already established that God knows and sees all. But his eyes are always watching. So when you start to question, God, why are the wicked doing this? Why are the wicked are doing that? Well, God's watching, God sees, God knows, God will handle it. See, but so often we just focus on them and what they're doing and forget what we're doing. Well, where are you going? What are you doing, son? What are you doing, daughter? What are you, what are you doing to know me? Why are you focus on what they're, why do you know more about what the wicked are doing or, what, or think you know what the wicked are doing than you do knowing me? See, because all the wicked, you could be praying for the wicked to not be wicked, but if you're judging the wicked, then you might be more wicked than the wicked are. Hmm, we don't talk about that. See, so it becomes, a, it becomes really a waste of time to focus on the wicked because it's not an investment into anything. But when you start investing in knowing that God's, God's eyes are on you and you get in that place with Him where it's the only place that you want to be is dwelling in His presence, then now the peace that He gave you is there. It's operating. It's not dormant while you're frustrated because somebody somewhere is doing something. They always have been and they always will be. They'll always be poor among you. They'll always be wicked. So you pray for them. It's why we pray every single day. Every single day we pray. And you know what? Is God answering? He sure is. And I praise God and thank Him for it. So you start to see that God sees all. He sees. He sees you as much as He sees them. So what is it about you that you want Him to see? <laughs> it's a good question, right? Turn with me to, uh, let's go back to Psalm 139. Verse 23, look at this, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me and know my thoughts. I love this because the psalmist knows that God sees and knows his heart. If you were to write down and make a list, what does God see about your heart? What, what, what would be on that list? God already knows and sees it, but... For you to have that revelation of it, what, what's on that list? What is it that God sees? What, what do you want Him to see? What do you want in, in, that, in that arena of your relationship with Him? God is already seeing your heart. A lot of times we just don't have a, we don't have a revelation of it because what I've found in, in, in the body of Christ is that we just pray a prayer that might be a flesh prayer and then when God doesn't answer it the way that we want by our flesh, we think that God's not hearing or seeing. And then we get frustrated and then our relationship with the Lord becomes frustration and then our lives just become a frustrating pile of fluff of nothing, right? And, and so and maybe some of you understand this. And so most of the problems that you probably have have nothing to do with God. They're you tied up in your flesh expecting God to serve you by your mental state and you not serving God by your spiritual one. So God knows and sees your heart. 
what's in your heart. What have you yet to discover about your heart? Write down those things. Because here's what it'll do. You'll find, oh, I gave it away. Oh, well, go get it back. Get that back. Well, my heart is this. My heart is hurting. I got a wounded spirit. Okay, that or a broken heart out of Proverbs, out of Psalms. Okay, let's get that back. Now we've got, Lord, I want, I, I need these things. My heart is aching. My heart is hurting. My heart fill in the blank, right? He already knows and he sees it. So now it's time to let him in. It's time to let him in. See, how do you think if you're single and a, and a woman or even a man that, that if you hate men, how do you think you're going to get a godly good husband if you've not yet dealt with your heart issues with God or with Jesus or with the Holy Spirit? Many that hate men struggle in their relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit because they're men. So we got to really examine that God, God sees our hearts. And it's perfect. He, he created you perfect. So what is it that's being hidden? Well, you know, da, 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 da. Well, he already knows and sees all. You can't hide from him, so it's already there. It's just that we don't want to touch it because we don't like how it makes us feel, but it's already there. Let him touch you. Let him touch you. Spiritually, then you'll be transformed mentally. Many of you are trying to be mental, fixing the spirit, and it will never work because you're only working on the soul and not the spirit. That's why I taught so much at length on this in my series on rest. Because I never met a, to be honest, I never met a more group of unrestful people than, than, than those that are sitting in a lot of buildings on Sundays. And, and God's a good God. We just have had him really removed in a lot of ways because it's just become the me. I just go to the me church. Feed me, feed me, give me, give me. It's about me, it's about me, it's about me, it's about me. Let me tell you, hear me, because it's all about me. If it's not, let me tell you, I'm going to make it about me, because me is all it is. She or he, it is me. So there's no room for God. God sees your heart. He's just waiting for you to put yourself on a shelf so we can talk. Just saying, happens all the time. So when you start to see that God sees your heart and that he knows your heart, now you can start to move. Still in Psalm 139, check this out, 139 verse 7. Love this, this is my final point. Whither shall I go from the Spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? You can't escape from God. You can move, but you still are what you are wherever you live. <laughs> <laughs> move across the street. Well, you still have the same problems and you still are what you are. So that's not really going to solve the issues, right? You might say, yes, but the grass is green over there. Yeah, you still got to mow it. Is it grass? Mm. You know, but, but you, can't, you, you can't escape God. Elijah, he ran. Jezebel, he, Jason, he running, he's running from Jezebel. Now, many of you might be running from crazy women. We understand that. However, he's running. He's running. And, and there's no, you can't escape. You maybe escape the crazy people, but you cannot escape God regardless of how fast you are. You cannot escape God. There's no escaping God. None. When you get that you can't hide or escape two different things, then now you can settle in, settle into that place. Well, Lord, there's nowhere for me to go except right here. When you position yourself right here, then you start to understand Jacob's, Jacob's wrestling with God. I'm not leaving until you bless me. I'm not leaving. I am not leaving. I'm staying here, and I am not leaving, and we are going to deal. And here I am, Lord. Deal with me so that I can deal with me so that we can deal together going forward. But you can't escape God. Many are trying to do everything they can. You can, you can th try to remove God. Oh, just because you think you're going to hit a cancel button, that's not going to do nothing. That is, a, that, I mean, it's cute and funny, but I mean, in all seriousness, no, there will be a day when you will be before God. Every knee will bow. So you may as well start bowing now. You may as well get before him and not live out the rest of your days on that fast track to hell because your only option is to get with God or go to hell. That is it. There are requirements of getting in one place and there are none to get to the other. You must make your choice and recognize that in all of these things, God is a good God. His best is for you. His son died for you so that you could be free. If you are not free, 
free. That is not God's fault. That is you to uncover, discover, and deal with you, with God, so that you can get free and walk and testify in the fullness of what he has done for you. Because he has done much more for you than what you have given him credit for. He has done much more for you that you probably even thanked him for. He has done much more from you, for you than you have even thought to acknowledge, still expecting him to do more without even a thanks. Mm. Not okay. We got to change that. We've got to change that because God is a God that is worthy of all. We think we're worthy, but really, we sit down. We have got to get this, that God is a great God. I want to say it again. God is the greatest God and God loves you. His son loves you. Tell it to yourself until you receive it. He loves you right where you are. You don't need to escape him. You don't need to run from him. You need to run to him. That is the only way that you will ever get anywhere. And I wouldn't tell you this if I haven't been in that position to do it daily. And as you do, you will see just how much he loves you right where you are in the filth and the stench and all the depravity and all the decrepitness. He loves you. So, Father, today, I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you are everywhere. And I thank you, too, Father, that you see us. I pray, Father, for every single person who's hearing this, that you speak to them in a way that they know it's you. I thank you for the ladybugs that will come forth. I thank you for the butterflies that come forth. I thank you for the pennies and the nickels that, that, that people know that, hey, this was God. I thank you, Father, for every single thing that, that people would know that they would feel your warmth, your embrace. For those that are feeling invisible, I thank you that you see them and help them. Please, Father, send your ministering angels to minister to them. Show up in ways that they've never known. For those that are crying out, those that are wanting to commit suicide, we rebuke that. And I thank you, Father, that you will make the way, that there would be the way made for them to know, to feel, to testify. I was in this place and something happened. I thank you, Father, that there are dreams that people will be having of you, that they will get free. And I praise you today, Father. It matters not where we've been. It matters not who we voted for. It matters not the color of our skin. It matters not any and all of the things that are being used as tools by the devil to make us want to kill one another and hate. We reject the lies of the enemy, and we come before you thanking you that you see us as much as you see them. So we pray for all these, all these, these people that are showing their heart condition. We pray today, Father, for them, that their hearts would turn toward you, that they would realize they don't have to cry for genocide because they're crying inside. So we pray for these people that are, that are crying out for help, for love. I pray, Lord, that, that there's a transformation that takes place on this earth, that we see you by your word and not by the lies of the devil. I thank you, Father, for these things, and I pray them all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, and to God be the glory for you and the creation of you today. It's just awesome, and I look forward to meeting each and every single one of you because there's so much that we can be sharing and in fellowship with, about with God. Now, we do pray every single day, so I invite you to join us. You just dial the number you see it in the comments below, and we pray. It's really that simple. I invite you to join us and also visit us at julieblowministries.org. There's a lot of things that we're working on and working toward that I'm very, very excited about. A new book that I've been working on for a very, very long time that, that well, I believe will draw you near to the Holy Spirit. And also, you know what, if you've not hit that button that reads subscribe to partner with us, please do so. I know that there's a lot of shadow banning and I know that there's a lot more increase of, of removal of these messages, especially when I see the statistics of, of what once was to what is. I know that there's an operation to deny and to, to cease the, the movement. But you know what? God's movement will never cease or slow. And so with that said, if you've not hit that button, please help us. And also you're ensuring that you will receive these messages when they are posted. So you don't want to miss out on spirit-filled word from 
God. Now, finally, the, the last thing, give wherever you are getting fed. Every, there, every ministry has a need. This ministry is no different. We do have needs to be operational. And, and I know it's a tough time for everyone, but I also know the only way that I'm here is because I gave myself out of poverty. I had to move out of the mindset that if I give you my $2, that God won't recompense me or God won't bless me. Life in the pit of hell. Giving is not about a dollar amount. It's about a faith amount. And so what faith do you have to believe God for? Don't be stupid and don't, don't be putting your credit card up to the screen like all these con artists want you to do. That's all, that's all rubbish. I'm speaking you doing what is right by God, being a cheerful giver, since you cannot outgive God. Wherever you are getting fed, be a giver. Be a giver. Just make that your mandate for this year and for your life, and you will... No, I give everything I have into every message. I've given up my life savings to be here to do this. And and God is still keeping me upright. So praise God for that. I pray you're having a great day. Don't forget to write down what God sees in your heart. If you do have a prayer request, please post that in the comments below. And I love you all. And I'm so thankful for each and every one of you and what God's doing in your life. And I look forward to our next time together. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.